imagine having to watch yourself on live national television from a transition house. Wow. Woo! All right, everybody. This is your boy, My Wan, here at Dash Radio on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Today we got, I want to say, uh, Omaha native, right? Yes, yes sir. N- Nebraska native in yeah. the motherfucking house. J. Ronnell. How are yes. you doing? Yes, I'm good, man. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. You know, the, the I, I say this to most artists, and I'm not gassing. I only interview artists that I believe in, like their music or their career. Every once in a while, someone will get squeezed in. That's like an industry favor or something. But yeah. I'm doing really good today because part of my daily job when I'm interviewing someone is listening to their music. Man. Jay Ronnell, I was listening to Stuck like a mother. I was stuck <laughs> on Stuck. Come on. That is a beautiful record. Thank you, man. I, I appreciate you. I really feel like you you embody the R&B music that I personally just grew up off of and love. That's exactly what we're going for. Like you you haven't tried to you you haven't conformed to this new kind of like I call it like quick R&B where it's like really short songs, a mm-hmm. lot of auto tune, yeah. more rapping than singing. You're still doing you, like like what you grew I've, up off. I've been working on finding finding my lane and finding out what my style is. And I feel like with this song and with even some of the previous songs that I've uh, been working on, it's like, okay, we're finally figuring out who is J. Ronnell as an artist and where does he fit in this R&B genre. So no, hearing you say that just is like confirmation for me. It's you. You're right where you need to be. I think you. I think there's a reason you've been on TV. You know what I mean. <laughs> and people have. You got. You've been in the game for. You started dropping in 2016, if I'm correct. Yeah. So I've been singing since age three, um, and then I really started taking my career seriously actually around 2014. But my first project, yeah, came out in 2016. And okay, so you drop your project 2016. Yeah. Within two years of you dropping your project, you're on Fox. Yeah. You're on TV. <laughs> you're competing in a very unique show. It's called The Four. Yes. The if 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 I'm correct, the premise of the show is there's like four people and they're trying to make a band or something. Something like that. So it's um basically it's like you have these four contestants. And each week, there's a new series of contestants trying to take one of those four spots. But first, they're having to compete for, you know, uh, the judges' approval. And uh, at the time, the judges were Diddy, Megan Trainer, and DJ Khaled. And so, you know, you sing your first song, and if you get enough yeses from the judges, then you're able to challenge for one of those four spots, presuming they're still available. And then from there, it's a battle of who gives the better performance, whoever wins, gets that chair, secures their spot until next week, they do it again. And then when they get to the finale, it, you know, it's basically a, a four person battle from there. And the four people were, were battling for this at that point, like who wins the show, right? Yeah. So, damn, what a what a, a cast of ho- our panelists. Yeah. Between uh, Diddy and Khaled, who who <laughs> left the bigger impression? Impression on you? Oh, by far, Diddy. Diddy, for really? me, for me, because it's having to look him in the eye. It's a, it's a little bit intimidating. It's a little bit, but at the same time, because it was a live studio audience, they're cheering you on, and you just feel like this rush of adrenaline come over you, and so it was just like, at that point, it was just kind of instinct and autopilot. You know, mm. and it's just like, okay, let me hurry up and get to the song. Because the more we talk, the more, you know, it starts to kind of set in like, oh, holy crap, that's Diddy. Back, right? You know, but if you just let me sing, I just kind of black out. Okay. Um, but yeah, when I uh, when I finally did get eliminated, because it, it did happen. <laughs> what, what was his name? I looked it up. Was it Jamie Graham? Uh, James, yeah. James, James Graham. Graham. Fuck you, James Graham. Oh, I'm, no, I'm playing. No. I'm playing. <laughs> no, James is cool. James I wanted is a good to see guy. your reaction. I thought you were going to be like, fuck James Graham. <laughs> nah, James is a cool guy. Yeah. But um, no, when I, when I finally did get eliminated and I had to make my short goodbye speech, I was like, okay, in the back of my mind, I don't want to just leave off stage without, you know, making some sort of lasting impression. So I was like, okay, you know, if I'm going to leave, I'm going to leave on a joyful, happy note. Diddy, can you come up here and do, you know, the Diddy Bop dance with me? 
you know, that dance that he always does in he the, the, the bad boy. But, and so he, he came up there and wow. we, we had that moment together. So for the rest of my life, I can say that I've done the Diddy Bop on stage with Diddy. With Diddy. On national television. That is fucking fascinating. That makes yeah. the whole thing worth it. Yeah. Wow. wow. Absolutely. So how did you get, how did you get on the show so close to your debut as an artist? Like what did it take to get there? So I had auditioned previously for pretty much all the shows, Sunday Best, American Idol, The Voice, America's Got Talent, all of them. And I had given up because um, they kept telling me no, you know, for whatever reason, they either didn't feel like I'd be a good fit, didn't feel like, you know, I'd be able to keep up with the competition, whatever. They just weren't checking for me. So I had given up, moved on. Season two auditions come around for the four, and a friend of mine was having a birthday concert open mic. I perform at the open mic and bump into one of the casting producers. Mm -hmm. And he, you know, basically encouraged me to try again auditioning, and he walked me through the audition process, gave me some different tips, do's, don'ts, all of that. And I get to the audition, the executives are like, you know, you sound great. We like you. You sound amazing. We'll keep in touch. And so flash forward, I think two weeks later or a couple weeks, I don't remember the exact amount of time, um, they had started to film the first couple episodes and I needed to pay some bills. So I was like, okay, let me be a seat filler. And it just so happened that the four was looking for seat fillers. So I was like, okay, cool. Makes sense. Seat fillers, like people in the To be in audience. the audience, just okay. to cheer and, and all of that. So I was like, okay, cool. You know, no problem. You, in the back of my mind, I was like, as long as this doesn't potentially disqualify me, I'm going for it. So I, mm -hmm. did, I did my best to lay low. What I didn't know, though, was that one of my friends from college was going to be one of the contestants for that particular episode. Oh, shit. So he gets up there, I see him, and of course, you know, I'm trying to support and cheer him on. Absolutely. In the process of me cheering, the camera guy pans to me, they zoom in on me, the footage gets back to the producers, and then from there, they're like, hey, we saw you on the show, or we saw you in the audience, and we remember your audition, we want to bring you on the show. And so from there, they're asking me more and more questions, and they basically craft this story of, you know, I'm coming straight out of college, moving to LA, kind of navigating my way around and going through this independent artist journey. And, you know, me being a fan of the show and trying to be very uh, studious as a music student, how I tie that in together somehow. <laughs> and now I'm, I'm using this strategy to get onto the show. And it was just like, okay, we'll go with that. Yeah, you know, I'll take it, yeah. Yeah, sure. Whatever's going to get me on the show, whatever's going to get me on that stage. And from there, the rest is history. Wow. So, yeah. hey, there's a few layers there I want to peel back on. One, to the beginning of what you were saying, you said the show producer, showrunner gave you advice. Like, he took you through the audition process. Yeah. Do you remember any of those pieces of advice? Um, it was more so about song choice and just overall stage presence. You know, um, especially during the audition, you know, <laughs> when you're doing executive producer auditions, I don't, maybe it's just like an internal memo where the producers just sit there very stuffy, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm used to, whether it's singing in church, singing at school, singing at open mics, wherever, I'm used to, you know, when you hear somebody singing good, you're going to react. You're going to give them a, a hand wave, a smile, a, a yell, something to let them know that you approve of what they're doing. Mm -hmm. So they're sitting there very stoic and that can be very off-putting for, you know, a singer who's not used to that. Absolutely. So it's like, okay, here's how you navigate that and keep their attention as well as again, song choice, you know, what songs are you singing that are going to make them say, okay, we can take you seriously as a contestant. You're not just going to get up there and try to sing anything. You're going to sing something that shows us who you are and why you should be one of the people to get one of these chairs. Why we should consider you Interesting. Uh, a threat, so to speak. Was it about like picking a song that fit you as an artist or picking a song that fit the show? I think a little bit of both. Okay. A little bit of both. Because um, again, you know, I, I, <laughs> I could have just sang anything mm -hmm. and done my best to make it sound good, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to translate well on television. Yeah, yeah, You know, yeah. it's just like, okay, he sings, but... You know, that song doesn't make us buy into him as a potential commercial artist. 
That's really interesting. I never thought about like how yeah. much your song choice. Weighs yeah, song in choice on you. definitely matters. Wow. Well, shout out to the gentleman who walked you through that and got you on the shout show. Shout out to him. And then um, I'll say, going back to the point about song choice mattering, I uh, definitely had to learn that again once I got on the show because um, a lot of people remember, and the clip still circulates, of me singing this woman's work, uh, originally by Kate Bush, but everybody knows the Maxwell version. I was going to use that as my first song, my first introduction mm -hmm. song, instead of like the closing knockout punch. And thank God for my vocal coach, who is Eric Dawkins, uh, who, you know, many may know from the, just, just writing a whole bunch of hit R&B records, um, and Lorianne Gibson, who has worked with Diddy numerous times. You've seen her yeah, on yeah. Making the Band. Choreographer. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, they both were like, no, you need to switch these two songs around and do this woman's work second because that's the one that's going to really seal the deal. If you do that first and you come out the gate with that, you could lose momentum. Yeah, yeah. That's... And so I was like, okay, I'm going to take your advice. And that is Thank what God you did. Because you, the way yeah. you did this woman's work, and I was wondering why it, it, it was saying, who was it, Kate Bush, who was the yeah. initial? Be, I didn't know that that Maxwell was covering another song. Yeah, I really had no clue. A so lot of even people don't know mind. like the the real deal behind that song. They think it's, you know, they think of course it's just Maxwell's song, and they also think it's a love song. You'd be surprised how many times I've had people request, you know, oh, can you sing that at my wedding? And it's just like you do know the story behind this song is not a happy one, right? Like, I did not know. What is the story behind this So song basically the, the song is a prayer. The, uh, the man in the song is praying to God to save his wife as she is in the midst of transitioning after giving birth to their child. Trans like dying? Like, yeah. That's, oh. why, that's why it says, I know you have a little life in you left. But people just are so used to hearing... You know, oh this this angelic voice of Maxwell sing. And of course, I think also because um, infamously it was placed in the the love scene in um, Love and Basketball. Yeah, yeah. So people associate that with, oh my God, this is such a romantic song. And it's like, mm. Up until this moment, I thought that was one of the more romantic songs I heard in my life. It's, yeah, it's one of those songs where it's just like, we, we got to check those lyrics, kids. Yeah, whoa, <laughs> man, you just fucked up. J. Ronnell, you messed up my whole <laughs> listening experience for this woman's work. It's, it's, it's a prayer. I don't think I can listen to it again. Oh my <laughs> God, okay. Well, I want to get back to a little bit of your roots. Yeah. I like to give every artist that comes in here and sits with me an album from my CD okay. collection. So I brought two albums. I'm going to start with one, and then we'll get into the other one, and I'm going to okay. let you pick which album you want to take home gotcha. today. So this album, I don't know if you listened to it growing up. I don't know if you liked it, but every time I listened to one of your records, I thought about this artist. Mm -hmm. I almost felt like I was listening. Like you have, and, and I say this in all positivity as a compliment, you sound a lot like this dude to me. You just give mm -hmm. off his same energy. So uh -oh. I want to present you with... Ooh. Music Soul Child. I don't know if you do you listen to a lot of music? So I have I have several of his songs on my iPhone. Um I will say I've never really gotten the chance to get like deep, deep into his music. Okay. But I've covered quite a few of his songs, whether doing live gigs, um, or you know, at open mics and of course, yeah, definitely. Have I have you a been huge told that you sound like him before? Um, I think a few times. Normally, I usually get like John Legend, Donny Hathaway. Mm -hmm. Those are like the main two. But I, now that you're saying it, I can hear a little bit of it. And I can it, hear a little bit of it's, it. It's the way you sound and also because you write your music. Yeah. Correct? It's your writing style to me. It's very wow. music soul child. Because music doesn't just do like a traditional, yeah. like a, everything's hitting at the same beat. Music's very off beat. He'll break into like a little bit of a melody, yeah. come back with a little bit of sing rapping. And so anyway, I, I kept listen. feeling like I was listening to music. Soul and Child. At, listen, okay. This kids is what we call a CD. Yeah. We used to listen to these back in the day. They still matter. Cause you got the, the you got the cover, you know, you got the, the liner notes so you can figure out who wrote the song and who produced it and all of that fun stuff. 
This is no, this is really dope. No, this of really course. Dope. Yeah, I had to give that to you. You're the first artist I've heard in a while that I feel like I can draw a comparison to Music Soul Child. Wow. Because he is so unique. Bad. And he is such a great spirit. He was up in here three weeks ago. And I wish I had met you prior to so I could have called you and been like, Man. yo, y'all, y'all gotta sing something <laughs> together. Cause you you remind me a lot of him. But that would be dope. I'd love to collaborate with him one day. Well, you guys also have something in common, a little bit different, but in common. Okay. Music grew up in a strictly Muslim household. Okay. So he was only allowed to really listen to like, you know, we say non secular music or whatever, like secular music. Like yeah. he, he wasn't really exposed, I don't think, to all the music that was out there. Yeah. Yourself. You grew up in a you grew up in a, a, a Christian household. That's, there we go. A yeah. Christian household and I in my research, I, I picked up that your mom might let you listen to like the two minutes of the radio, three minutes until they said some shit. Um, yeah, it, it would have to be usually Radio Disney. We stayed on Radio Disney. That was like my uh, way of figuring out what people were listening to at the time. And so, you know, they would always have like the clean edited version of records. Um, and at the time it was like very heavy teen pop. So like the Y2K movement. You had Destiny's Child, Usher, Backstreet Boys, NSYNC, Britney Spears, Jessica Simpson, Mandy Moore, you know, the list goes on and on. Mm -hmm. So in addition to, of course, like the kid-friendly pop music, um, it was definitely a lot of gospel, a lot of choir stuff, 80s, 90s gospel. Um, also, you know, a bit, a hint of classical here and there every now and again. Um, and then, of course, you would get like the, the older Motown stuff. So like the Jacksons, definitely very heavy on uh, the Jacksons and uh, the Temptations, Diana Ross, Earth, Wind, and definitely a lot of Earth, Wind, and Fire. Um, and then as I got older and started to get out on my own, that's where I started to pick up even more of the heavy R&B influence mm. and also started really getting into country and pop and rock and really trying to become a more well-rounded musician and artist. Yeah. yeah and i think that it shows in your music that you you had a a christian background because your yeah. music it's not it's not like fully clean but your music is very it's it's radio friendly you, you know? try to because i i know that there are so many people back home who support me from mm -hmm. my home church who still will catch on to my music um and you know i don't want to have to get no calls talking about well you know, so and so was talking about your music. They didn't appreciate that you. I'm like, I don't want to hear it. Does your mom ever call you like Jay? I Most heard. of the time nowadays, she kind of, you know, lets me have, you know, because I'm 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 28. I'll be 29 in February, so it's yeah. like, you know, I'm I'm grown out yeah, here. Yeah, I've I've had plenty of life experiences. I made it to TV, mom. What else do you want? Yeah. Um, but actually, crazy enough, we're, since we're talking about the new song, Stuck. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll, I'll let everybody in on a little secret. The release date is, of course, January 13th. But originally, <laughs> the song kind of leaked online because I, I submitted the wrong, uh, I submitted the wrong date. Or I, I made, I didn't make sure to check the year. So I originally submitted it and uploaded it, and it had January 13th, 2022. So next thing you know, it's hitting all these platforms, and my mom was the first one who caught it. Thank God. She was the first one who caught it, so I was immediately able to take it down and re-upload it with the right date. But she called me, and she was like, um, you need to do some happier songs. <laughs> and I was just like, first of all, this song, even it's not supposed to be out yet. But she was basically like, okay, yeah, like we need to get you some happier songs because I have a, a tendency to write from a more heartbreak kind of I perspective. Think, yeah, most you artists, know, I think, yeah. get inspired in those moments. Yeah. Was but, was that song like a true account? Was that something absolutely, that... Absolutely, absolutely. Has, has the other half of that song, who was about, called or reached out? Um, they have not called, but they... Uh, they have heard, I'm sure, by now, and it's interesting that I know how they have heard because it was like a whole two-year ordeal of back and forth, and, you know, the last time we saw each other uh, did not end quite the way I was hoping it would, 
Mm-hmm. And, you know, after some time apart, tried to have a conversation. Next thing you know, I end up on the block list. <laughs> mm-hmm. And so I was just like, okay, well, I guess that's that. And so yeah. I kind of started to just be like, okay, you know, God help me to let go. You know, it's, it's hard because that hurts, but help me to let go. Next thing I know, guess who pops up in my, my Instagram likes? I'm like, didn't you block me? Because they heard the record, probably. Well, so I guess somehow there was some sharing, you know, like on Instagram stories, uh-huh. there was some sharing going on between mutual friends. One mutual friend shared it. Voila. Um, but as far as the song itself, yes, definitely. It, I wrote this in September, around September of 2021, um, after we kind of fell out the first time. Mm-hmm. And I had gotten wind that other people started coming into the picture mm-hmm. or at least I'll say made the assumption, you know, I don't know for sure, but you know, you know how we as men get regardless of, Absolutely. regardless of what your, your sexuality is. We as men, I feel we have a tendency to jump the gun, kind of assume stuff Absolutely. and be like, Oh, well we out here seeing other people now. Yeah, I thought yeah. we was both taking time to work on ourselves. And yeah. it was just like, <laughs> Especially when they see someone before you. Yeah, and I, I just kind of started to be like, oh, okay, well, I'm left here with all of these feelings and emotions, and, you know, how do I how do I process that? How do I deal with that? And I started to think again, you know, other people can relate to this feeling of the other person has moved on or is in the process of moving on, and you're still stuck with the feelings mm-hmm. and, and all of that all of the memories and stuff. So I was like, you know, there's a song to be written here. I love that. And you're absolutely right. We've all gone through it. I've gone through it multiple times where like you end with somebody, but you're, even though you're not physically with them, mentally you're stuck. Absolutely. Like where I've had to go to the point where I had, I had to block people. I had to block her on Instagram because I didn't even want to be able to look her up anymore, you know? So I know that feeling of being stuck And I think it's beautiful that it drew from a real inspiration. I always tell artists, songwriters specifically, uh, what's so beautiful about being a songwriter is you can take such a tragic, negative experience in your life and create something that can have such a positive experience in your career. So I think you did that with Stuck. Thank you, man. It's very catchy, sultry. It really reminded me of music. Like Numerous times I'm sitting there like... I'm definitely going to have to go home and, and really get into... The, the deep cuts on this album because I definitely let me see see and come on with the cover art um, of course we all know just friends that mm-hmm. that is an open mic staple yes um, and love love now I will say love I want to I want to find the chance to cover that um, live one day because I've should. heard a couple other people do it but I want to be able to like put my own little no you really spin on sound it. like and, and I say this in all positivity he is such a unique artist artists you have the same energy and like something about it when i when i was listening to you i kept music kept popping in my head maybe because i I just finally met him and he's like fresh on my mind but i really think there's like he's almost like your vocal ganger you know what i mean (laughs) i'll Um, take it i will gladly take that well i got another album i want to give you as well um and this is actually more so related to when your career started to take off okay and what i think was a really special moment for you so what you got? I got the John Legend of all. Ooh, see, see, see. Okay. I Come do on. my research, kids. Do your research. Listen, when we when we talk about like influences, John Legend again is at the top of that list for me. Um, I still remember this would have been probably age fourteen. 13, 14, somewhere in there, you know, when, when you're a teenager, you start to go through vocal changes. And before puberty, I used to be able to be like straight up tenor section, maybe sometimes even in the alto section. So when my voice started to change, I'm thinking to myself, oh, you know, what, am, what is this going to sound like? How is this going to affect my voice? Am I going to be able to sing again? And he was one of the first voices I remember specifically. It was the Get Lifted album. He was one of the first voices I heard that had matched where my tone was starting to be placed. So I was like, okay, let me study this album. 
And so ever since, like John Legend has been at the top of the list as far as like influences and people that I listen to. And just in terms of his career, you yeah. know, how he has the longevity, the hits, you Absolutely. know, and, and you talk about again, you know, song, songwriting style. Yeah. It's like he's been able to write songs that are so like so deep in R&B but they're able to cross over absolutely and create universal appeal absolutely so and, and he's yeah. crossed over I, I wouldn't even consider him not that like I think genres now are like silly for most like for R&B to me it's just labeled that you were urban you know what I mean you're yeah. African American or Hispanic and they would say oh you're not a pop singer you're an R&B singer Definitely. I think John was one of those people that started R&B and now he's just a, he's, he's a pop yeah. artist he's a superstar he's been able to create you know his his own world but no definitely so i'm well I'm, you're a big john legend yeah. fan right yeah okay can on. i can i test you on john legend lyrics and if if if, if you pass all three you can have both <laughs> albums can we try it depends on which song let's see i'm just gonna sing i'm gonna not sing because i can't sing i'd sound like trash oh, i'm God. gonna start off a song i'm gonna start easy Okay. okay. And we'll see if you can just complete the chorus. And if you okay. can do all three, both albums are yours. If not, I'm going to have to take one of them back. Okay. Okay. So the first one's easy. Because all of me loves all of you. Loves your curves and not all of your perfect imperfections. Give your all to me. I'll give my all to you. You're my end and my beginning. Even when I lose, I'm winning. Because I give you all me and you give me all of you okay you got that one for sure that was the easy that was like, a give me all right we'll that was that a one. give me the next one if if you won't stay won't you stay save oh um save 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 room for my love do, 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 do. save room for the moment to be with me Save room for my love, just a little. Save a little for me, won't you save a little? Okay, okay. Save a little you, for me. You're a real John Legend fan. Listen. We got one more, though. <laughs> we got one more. This oh, is more God. of a deep cut. Oh. This is not even a deep cut. This is actually one of the earlier John songs, which I have a okay. feeling you're going to get this because you mentioned get, get Lifted. All right. Baby, when I used to love you. Oh, uh. Nothing that I wouldn't do, no, no. I went through the fire for you, and anything you asked me to. But I'm tired of living this life. It's getting harder to justify. I realize that I just don't love you. Do -do 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 -do. Not like I used to. Holla, holla. Whoa! Okay, you just, you gotta keep Listen. both albums. <laughs> Thank you. You are a real John Legend fan. Listen. Because that was his first single. I was just like, okay, just... You know, throw one out there that I'm gonna remember the words <laughs> yeah. to. You know how sometimes you'll be listening to a song and then halfway out it's like no, 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 no. No, I yeah. was I was betting that you wouldn't know the words, you would know the harmonies, <laughs> especially to used to love you. Oh, but no, you, I've covered that one a multiple. Do you remember times. that video? That video to me actually embodies yeah. like I feel like that's like you in the church. You know, oh, he's wow. like singing in the church. I can and, see it. Yeah. I can see it. And, and I I saw there was a moment where you sang all of me on the show. Yes. And John actually tweeted. He he did. How did that must have like your heart oh, must have dropped? Do you remember between, that moment? Between him, Maxwell replying on Instagram when I tagged him, and John P. Key, who's a gospel legend, and another one of my like er, like early early like childhood J. Ronnell uh, vocal influences. To have those three people comment back to back on either Twitter or Instagram, I was over the moon. I was like, you can't tell me nothing. They know who I am or at least have heard me sing. Yeah. Like, now, do you remember when the when the John one hit, what was so special to me is from everything I read, like, you fucking love John Legend. That's yeah. why like, I had the John Legend lyrics ready just yeah. to try to gauge how much you love him, but I knew he was a big inspiration. Mm -hmm. Was that one of those moments where, like, you remember where you were, what you were wearing? Um, Not, certainly not what you Not what you were wearing, but, but you know what I mean? That um, moment. At the time, crazy enough, um, and that this is the one thing I will say uh, about being on the four that I wish I would have been able to get that last week 
uh, the finale week on because I really wanted to tell more of my story as far as like, you know, where I was in life and my why for being on the show. My my reason mm -hmm. why was not just to win a recording contract. I literally was going through very hard times in my personal life, like, you know, having to uh, reside in a transition house while we're taping the show. No way. Yeah. You were so, living in a halfway house, basically? Basically, for those who don't know, a transition house is a step above a homeless shelter. Okay. Because, you know, in L.A., you have these multi-roommate situations, mm -hmm. and unfortunately, not everybody was upholding their end of the bargain. I was doing my part, but not everybody else was. And so things kind of fell apart, and I was forced to have to figure out very quickly, how do I stay here in this city? I don't necessarily want to go staying on another friend's couch. I want to start to maneuver towards independence. And this path, you know, as... Yeah, as dark and, and as like just low as I started to feel, it was like this path w may lead me to some sort of independence at some point. So it's like, all right. So imagine, you know, having to watch, and we, we taped the show a week in advance. So imagine having to watch yourself on live national television from a transition house. Wow. Me, and I, I was also the youngest. It was five of us, five of us, me and four other grown men who all have their different situations, their own stories. It was just like, this is wild to me that I'm watching myself on TV and everybody's hitting me up talking about you finally made it. Yeah. You finally doing it. And I'm just like, if you only knew, if they only knew. where I am, literally physically am right now so to have that moment of john hitting me up was like yo so okay. you were in the transition house when john hit you up yeah wow talk yeah. about highs and lows yeah like i didn't once i didn't uh get out of that house until like three maybe two and a half three months after the show thankfully I, you know i've since gotten on my feet got my own place thank god for all I of that yeah, yeah. but yeah, that was a very, wow. it was just a very weird, it was exciting, but it was very weird. Because again, it's like your personal life is all the way down here, but, but your professional life has finally reached this high that you've been looking for for yeah. so long. Or at least, you know, one level of highs. So well, like, I think like as fans, I think it's beautiful that you shared that because a lot of yeah. times fans assume if I know this artist and I'm listening to their music, I, yeah. I, I envy them. I want to live their life. I want to be in their shoes. But, you know, the music industry isn't, it's not the highest paying job in the world. Absolutely. Even, and, and a lot of times, I actually think most musicians lose money on the music. You, mm. you know what I mean? Like, you have to invest so as much. much, if not more, than what, than what you get back. Yeah. So I think it's beautiful that you're able to share that because a lot of artists might be at that point in their career yeah. where they're not sure. It's like that meme where the guy's, like, digging for diamonds and then he stops and the yeah. diamond's, like, right there. And you just have to keep going and going and going. There's been so many times where, you know, I felt like, okay, this is going to be the moment this is going to be the song this is going to be the project this is going to be the big break or this you know this is going to be the performance that changes everything and it's like it all adds up to these you know these experiences and um you know these moments but it's like no that, that's not it so i'm i'm still i'm still on that journey but i definitely anticipate the day when it's finally like okay <laughs> now i know for sure this this is the breakout moment, like, and it's like, okay, I get confirmation from God, like, yep, this is the breakout. Now well, you're at the next Well, it's coming, line. and, you know, it's so interesting. No, because, I feel it, though. Do you know, there's so many artists who would die to be in your shoes, mm -hmm. who would have died for a moment to Diddy Bop with Diddy on TV, yeah. who, who would, you know, give an arm and leg to be recognized by Maxwell, by John Legend, let alone be on TV in yeah. general. So I think you give a really fresh perspective, and I, I, yeah. I, I like that you're still hungry. Yeah. You're still very humble. You have to. You have to stay hungry and humble because we've seen it time and again. You get complacent. You get comfortable, mm -hmm. and it's a wrap. You know, thing. And one thing I've learned since being here in LA, things change so fast. It's like every six to nine months, something is adjusting or shifting or changing. Yeah. And so some artist who was hot is completely gone. Yeah. So it's like you. You have to stay 
you have to stay rooted and grounded and and always remember again what is your your reason your why mm. um what is your why if you don't mind me asking for me it <laughs> as of late uh it's been this narr- battling back against this notion this narrative that R&B R&B is dead or you know our, folks aren't doing what they're supposed to do in R&B you know specifically with with the men you know that they, they ain't singing like they used to they're not being vulnerable like they used to this that and the third and I'm just like if you only knew how many of us out here are still giving you those classic elements we Absolutely. may not be doing it exactly how the the stars of the 80s and the 90s and the early 2000s are doing it but we're still giving you those classic elements but because music is so oversaturated and things move so much quicker nowadays it's harder for us to find you the supporters and for you guys to find us you you know who i blame wait didn't diddy wasn't diddy ironically the one who said r&b is he dead? did the irony behind he that, did right? play a part and i but, re- I remember I, I quote tweeted like you know better. You, you know, know better, did he? You know, especially you. Yeah. The architect. Well, I, well, in a way, the no, architect absolutely. of Mary J. And all yes, that. Yeah, like 100%. you have played a huge, huge part of helping to push late '90s, early 2000s R&B. So it's like if anybody should be trying to help resurrect the genre and dispel the the notions and the rumors and and the negative uh around this beloved genre should be you absolutely damn it no absolutely (laughs) you know what though i think a lot of it falls on i actually put it on the the major labels and the companies because they're now like from what i've realized i've been working back in music for about four years now Mm mm-hmm what I realize is that there's there is a machine. It's the industry. It's Universal. It's Warner. It's at, it's Atlantic. Yeah. These are the people who are putting major amounts of money into an artist. Yeah. When they put a major amount of money into an artist, that's when we start hearing about them. Mm-hmm. So whether you like Jack Harlow's last album or not, we all fucking heard Jack Harlow because yeah. they were shoving him down our throat. No yeah. disrespect to Jack. That's just what the label was doing. No, he's got some bops. No, he definitely has some bops. Yeah. But you can tell that the agenda was like, we're going to make Jack Harlow a superstar. And they did. They did yeah. a great job of it. But I feel like the labels aren't putting energy, effort, or even money behind real R&B anymore. Because how can you say R&B is dead? We have Jay Ronnell, <laughs> Vito. Have you heard of Vito? Of course. Fucking inc- I, I always comment on his Instagram. How yeah. can you say R&B is dead if Vito's alive? No, he, he's Eric another Bellinger. One. We got, Listen, even, even in the weekend. If you even Actually, think- so, small shameless plug. If you listen to Eric Bellinger's latest album, um, at the... I forget the song. Uh, Don't be afraid to shine your light, light on the world. If you listen to like the last 20 to 25 seconds of that song, you'll hear me riffing and running in the background. Because I was, I was, uh, me and a couple friends did the background vocals and the choir session oh, for shit. that record. That's amazing. So, you know, just So you know, plot. like R&B is not dead. I yeah. just think the spotlight isn't being shined on real, not real, because that's not fair, but traditional R&B. Yeah. Because there's so much of it. I can like, literally we can just sit here and India Sean, oh, Grace listen. Weber, like listen. so many R&B artists who are making that. Kenyon Dixon, uh, Brick, Brick, well, he, he's changed his name recently, but Brick Liam is another fantastic Brent Fai, one. Uh, Brent, Brent Fayez. Fayez yeah, Brent Fayez. Yeah, Brent um, Fayez. A lot of it. There is yeah, real R&B So many out people. There. Um, I think it's on us as the fans, and I think it's, it ends up falling on the label and the fans. I don't blame the artists. I hate yeah. that narrative of R&B is dead because <laughs> I listen to, like, India Sean. She knows... I was at India Sean's show at the, I think it was the Roxy, mm-hmm. screaming like a little girl. Yeah. She saw me in the crowd. Like, I wanted to cry when she said, uh, what did she say? Uh, um, you n- you'll never find love in oh, LA. Uh, uh, you can have your beach wave, beach wave. Yeah. Page, oh, I love that song. Money cliche and big, like, when I tell you that there are certain songs that by different artists nowadays that I wish I would have written. Was, that, is that is one, one of them? those songs, uh, Breaking Point by Leon Thomas. It just kind of came out over the holiday season. Okay, I haven't heard that one yet. Oh my, you have to take a listen to that one. Because okay, he signed point. to uh, Ty Dolla Sign's label on, okay. and they've partnered with Motown. 
when I tell you I was just like, why did I not write that song? And it's so, it fits perfectly with, you know, today's R&B landscape. It has just enough of that kind of vibey feel. Uh, but I mean, he is singing on this okay. record. I got, it's called Breaking Point. Yeah. Leon it's Thomas. It's so good. Okay. It's so good. Okay. And if, if he were here right now, I would tell him to his face, like, you put your foot in that record. Like, Leon Thomas, you put your foot in that Breaking Point record. It is so good. I got to check that out. And that is exactly how I felt yeah. with India Sean. When she got submitted to me, someone from uh, one of the labels said, hey, do you have any time to interview India Sean? Mm -hmm. I said, the fuck do I got time? <laughs> I got time today. When and where? It was one of those, <laughs> like, I will move mountains to make this happen. Yeah. And it was strictly off of my love for Cali Love. Yeah. That record to me is so special. It's so, good. And so you cannot, to me, say R&B is dead unless you really give all these artists a listen, yourself included, Vito, India Sean, that. Grace Weber. We can go. There's so many people that I, I recently discovered a kid named Q. Q, uh, his Instagram's like Q Marsden. I, uh, I know who you're talking about because he was on the Soul Train Awards. Yeah, I think so. He, yeah. 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 So, like another on. one where it's just like you discover and it's just like god that song is so good exactly yes you know what's crazy about q can i drop a little q fact his dad is a producer named lanky okay lanky's the dude who invented the diwali rhythm which wow. is the 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 one of the most used drum patterns of all time wow. behind get sean uh sean paul's get busy behind uh, wayne okay. wonder no letting go gotcha. rihanna Pwned a replay, Lumity. Um, so anyway, his pops is one of the most OG producers. He has this one drum pattern yeah. that like, he put an entire album out behind that drum pattern. Okay. And Wayne Wonder's No Letting Go was like the hit single. And since then, that drum pattern's been you know reused and repurposed. Yeah. So then his son is Q. So r and is That's not it. dead. Moral never. of this whole story. Never will. Never will die. Yeah, as long as as long as we got Jay Ronell, as long as we got the India Shans, the Vitos, the Eric yeah. Bellingers, I think it's it's on us as fans to support the right artists, support yeah. in the right way. Like I make it a point to try to buy someone's album every once yes, in a while. Please, please, please. That that it goes a long way. Like streams are nice, you know, having those those end of the year Spotify numbers are cool, but you know, buy the product straight out, you know, come to the shows. If, if a favorite artist of yours is in the city, go to the show, bring a friend, uh, you know, buy the tour merch if they have it, you know, whatever, whatever you can share, e even just word of mouth sharing. You know, a lot of times I think when we, uh, we as fans, when we find a new artist that we like, we kind of want to, especially the ones that are up and coming, we kind of want to hold on to them, keep them like a best kept secret. But it's like, no, share me. <laughs> share that shit. Do like a joint and pass me around yeah. to all of your friends, especially all the ones that listen to R&B, because I'm trying to be out here, you know, at the end of the year, I, I told, um, I was telling my therapist and my mom and, and just praying, like, I want this year, if not the breakout year, to be a breakout year. Mm. And I want my name to be on all of those best of R&B lists at the end of this year. I think as it far will, as 2020. I think it will because just based so. off Stuck, that's a record. Thank you. And, man. and, and you gave me a little uh, a little secret earlier before we went live. You're working on an EP or something? Yes. Yes. The full EP is coming in April. Um, oh, it's already set. You got the month set and everything. Yeah. So we're we're not given the full release date yet because um, we're we're just finishing up some last minute stuff. Um, on the, the graphic side, but I am excited for this project. Um, this one, it's it's a little different for me in terms of the story we're telling. Uh, with the last few projects, it's been kind of that same narrative of, you know, get into a situation, romantic situation, it hits kind of a peak, starts off great, hits a peak, then it kind of falls apart, and then by the end, you're left with kind of a, a moral of the story or you know, what's the, the feeling, whereas this project is kind of like the aftermath and exploring mm. not only the aftermath of that relationship, but the relationship with myself, the relationship with family and friends, um, mm. you know, and, and it's inspired partially by a number of things, being in the pandemic, having time to sit with self, 
Um, as far as like albums that I would say directly inspired this project, Janet Jackson's The Velvet Rope um, oh. and Hotels by Jasmine Sullivan. Okay, so, I haven't you know, heard that one. I got to check that out yeah, too. You haven't heard of Hotels? No. Nah. Oh I'm not God. perfect, Jay. I'm not perfect, man. Listen, you want to hear R&B. Okay, Hotels by Hotel, Jasmine Sullivan. Hotels, especially the deluxe version. Okay. That album will bless your life. And for me, it's it's interesting to hear about sex and relationships from a woman's perspective. Mm. And Jasmine's pen is like none other. And yeah, her, vo- her pen, in addition to her voice on these songs, it's like none other. And that album for me, in a way, it kind of gave me the permission to just sing how I wanted to sing. Because... You know, I've I've done records previously and songs previously where I've tried to do more of what's trendy, where I've tried to fit more into, you know, the the current mainstream R and B lane. But you know what feels right to you. Absolutely. You know at the end of the day when you're performing and you look out in the crowd, what are people responding to? Mm-hmm. And for me, listening to that record said, you know what, it is okay to be a more traditional R&B soul artist. It is okay to sing like from the depths of your heart and your soul on these records. You know, still do it tastefully. You don't want to overwhelm the listener, but it's okay to add more of that musicality to these records. Um, So definitely, I am looking forward to people hearing this full project um, and seeing just where where it'll take me. I think it's going to take you to... to uh, new new heights. I, I, I really so. think so. Uh, when I heard stuck, no pun intended, I w- it was immediately stuck in my head. Like <laughs> on first listen, yeah. um, it came through on my in my inbox. Yeah. And a lot of times I'm going to be very transparent. I always open the emails mm-hmm. and I'll always let the song play. Normally you'll get about 20 seconds of my attention wow. before I'm like, I've heard something like this before. It just didn't grab me. Right away, something about your voice grabbed me. I was like, God damn, this dude can sing. So then I went back and I I listened to your projects and I was really impressed with the progression. Mm -hmm. You've never, even though you said you you had a point where you felt like you were trying to conform with what was coming out, I never felt it. It never felt like you forced, like you were doing like, you never, for example, got a producer doing like mustard beats and try to do like (laughs) tinashe kind of, you know what I mean? Like when everyone was doing mustard. I feel you, yeah. Um, but what can we expect sonically on this new album? More upbeat, more sad? Did you take your mom's advice and go happy? Um, well, you know, again, this is a more emotional project. And like I said, it's it's partially inspired by uh, The Velvet Rope by Jada Jackson. So, you know, it's, um, I will say sonically, it's, it's soulful, definitely. Um, there's another record coming after this, which I don't want to give too much away, but like, that's another one where it's like, just again, giving myself the permission to just sing. And it's, I feel like it's a feel good record. It, it combines those elements of R&B and soul and church. Um, it kind of reminds me, actually the, partially the inspiration for it is kind of like a, a Drink You Away by Justin Timberlake. Mm. Uh, you know, very bluesy, very, just like, I can't wait to perform it live because I know I'm going to cut up. I, yeah. I know me. I know I'm going to cut up when I sing that record. I can't wait to hear it. But um, yeah, just so R&B, you know, some records that are a bit more um, acoustic. I have one record that is a bit more 80s inspired. Mm. Um, and, you know, there may be some other songs Again, don't want to give too much away, but there may be some other songs not necessarily attached to the project that the world will probably get to hear before the year is over. Okay, so you so, got a busy year. Oh, Go listen, I, I was like, no, we're not playing games this year. You I know, love It's that. time to pop back out. Like, it we're is, outside. Jay is back. I <laughs> we love are that, out man. here. I love that. Okay, yeah. so if someone is just discovering Jay Ronnell, what song do you want them to listen to first? First is Stuck. Because, I mean, obviously. Um, but, yeah, I would say Stuck and Think of You are, like, my favorite. Well, Stuck. Okay, here. I'll do top five. Stuck, Think of You, Stay, um, Better Than. Mm. And if we're going off the first project, now, I will say, disclaimer, my first project, we did on the college budget. 
So, you know, growth in you all areas. Tell. It sounded good. You couldn't tell. <laughs> growth in all areas, sonically, vocally, everything. But rock with you. Rock um, with you, okay. Yeah, because I feel like those songs together kind of help give you a good picture of not only who I am as a person and some of the things that I go through, have been through, but just, you know, sonically. Like, where where can I see him? Where, you know, what what kind of vibe do I get from Jay Rondell as an artist? Mm. Well, I love it, man. I'm I'm a big fan just of, of, of real traditional R&B. Yeah. I'm, I'm a 90s baby. So when I listen to the reason I fell in love with India Sean and Vito and Eric Bellinger and Grace Weber, the same mm-hmm. reason why I fell in love with Jay Ronell, yeah. you embody that R&B that I grew up off, that like, you know, that like genuine, that, yeah. that, that, that brandy. Um, yes. So, Super excited. I share a birthday with her. Our birthday's coming up. You to share 11. a birthday with Brandy? Yeah. It's Listen. me, D'Angelo, Kelly Rowland, and Khalid. I call God it the RM damn. birthday. God damn. The, the RM birthday, RB birthday. Same thing. Your birthday just passed, right? November mm-hmm. or something? Or February 11th. February. Coming up. Okay. That, yeah. that was, I remember the birthday was near now. <laughs> so February 11th, what a day. Yeah. What a day. That wow. is also technically the day we honor the memory of Whitney Houston as well. So. Oh, yeah. Recipes February Whitney. 11th is a, a very R&B heavy kind of Absolutely. Day. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, Jay, Dash takes a lot of pride in in uh, helping artists get to that next level in any way that we can. Yeah. We did Billie Eilish's first radio interview, wow. Cardi B's first radio interview, Come on, Post Cardi. Malone's first radio interview. Wow. Um, we had Kehlani on TV before anybody else did. So yeah. this was an honor for me to, to be able to invest in your career now. Thank Because I, I definitely think as the next year or two goes by, people are going to be like, fuck is Jay Ronnell? What the <laughs> fuck? And then just like the moment I had, and I I, I think this is going to be your like launching. I hope so. And I believe so. I really do. Where can people find you online? They can find me on social media at I'm Jay Ronnell, J E R O N E L L E again, J E R O N E L L E. Um, you can find me on technically I am on TikTok now as well. I'm, I'm getting the hang of that. It's, it's a different, Different world. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, Instagram, Twitter, you know, for those who still use Facebook, I'm on there as well. Um, you know, all over social media. And okay. then, of course, the the new single, Stuck, is on all platforms, Spotify, Tidal, Audio Mac, Apple Music, all of those wonderful places. And you'll hear it on Dash Radio, too. I've, I've already yes. told the R&B programmers I got one. I yeah. told them, I said, I'm interviewing somebody. I'm going to send on. you the audio clips from the interview. And I said, he has a record. So I'm going to see him tomorrow, and I'm excited to thank you, thank you, thank you. put that motherfucker in his face. Let's go. All right, Jay Ronnell, thank you so much. This is Dash Radio right on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Yes, um, yes, yes. I, I, I think in a year or two from now, I'm going to be trying to chase you down to get another interview, and I won't <laughs> even be able to get a hold of you. So hopefully that is the case, but also, you know, hopefully we can have you come back around. When Absolutely. The EP's ready. Absolutely. Absolutely. I would love to do this again. All right, Jay Ronnell, this is my one. Thank you so much. Thank you, man. I, I appreciate it. Boom.